Well, something completely outside the square today, as I initially thought. And yes, in this video we've got a Tammy Playwell Tokyo Metro train running on some Trackmaster track. And in fact, this is the only train set in my bed today because originally I was going to have a Tammy Playwell track system here in the middle, but yes, as I said before in previous videos, train sets do not run well on beds like mine. In fact, the mattress is one big problem, I would say. But in this video, we've got this Tokyo Metro train here, which is the old model I think that they've used in the Ginza line of Tokyo Metro, I think. The one I'm running now looks like someone's doing you know, hard work outside there. There is a bit of banging noise outside, that's why. And I've also got this train set here, which is the one I talked about just now. And it's one with the Tony Flower E256 or E257 commuter train here, the red one. And yes, that had suffered some problems running on the bed with its own layer, of course, of Trackmaster slash Tony Track. In fact, this one's running fully on Tony Track. And the other train set here I've got now is a new, well, let's just say Tokyo Metro train, which was bundled alongside with the old Tokyo Metro train running with it. Looks quite nice, doesn't it, though? And um, looks quite very, very good. It's running on a layout with slopes, elevated slopes, and the second here without slopes, which is very amazing since this layout is designed after a peanut or yes, peanut or dog bone sort of shape, I believe. Reminds me of an SNES um, controller, I would say. Sorry about the one game fans, but I know that this is the kind of shape that it reminds me of. I don't know why I'm going to sit my webcam, but I'm going to sit it there. And I'm actually off chair today because I'm going to try and make this video perfectly without any rough edges along the way though. I know it's going to be a little bit rough, but hopefully it's not going to be as rough as before. So the first flip up product I've got today is called the Flip Up Origami Dinosaurs Mctoraptor Bird Dino Troop 5 Pack. And this was one product that cost about £16. Not only that, this was one product I was originally going to review on Monday, but I've actually left this toy up on the shelves, and I actually didn't realise that I initially thought this toy review contained this product here, but nope, I accidentally left this one on the shelf. Silly of me, hee hee hee. But anyways, this product contains some dinosaurs called Meteoraptors, which are designed after painted and milky stalks of tropical Asia, and also designed after them too mixed with a generic raptor or dromosaurus theropod dinosaur look at that, oh my goodness me, look at these guys, they look totally amazing, they look like mutants or hybrids or something like that reminds me of that freaking CDI game Mutant Rampage which is something that I've actually heard of but not for you guys if you remember about the Philips CDI please do know because I know everything at times even though I'm a bit crappy at doing toy views like that and I've just jerked the um, webcam by just grappling the wires like so. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the Meteoraptors. As I just said now, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm just thinking maybe I could just drag the camera along and to where we are, there we are. So the dinosaurs we've got are these, which look like painted stalks or milky stalks from Tropical Asia with a Tokyo Metro train on the foreground here. We've got one with a brown neck but with a white back side but also some black patterns as well so I'll show you on the other side here as well it's also got pink feet, a yellow beak and uh, it's also got the same face patterns that you often see uh, actually I've actually did a review on these remember I did the painted stalks and the milky stalks that I did in previous videos sorry about the background noise this day but I just can't own myself because we've got some workers to do some working of course and I've also got another one here which looks pretty much similar to the other Meteoraptor, you know, painted milky stalk dinosaur, of course. And it feels like their tails, in fact, most of the dinosaurs here that are now handling now, the Meteoraptors, it looks like their, their tails have actually seen far much better days. It looks like they've been played. Uh, this one here in the background there, okay, looks very, very nice. It's got much more of a, um, a long beak, very similar to that. An albatross, I don't know, there's a clock there in the background which I'm not too keen of. But, anyways, we've got this one here. I'm pretty sure these beaks remind me of waterfowl, but I think it's more of a stork bill. Reminds me of these dinosaurs, I'm pretty sure it reminds me of one of these creatures out of Star Wars where 
What is it? I wonder what is it called. I can't remember its name. Let me have a, a, a go, okay? Before I start to put any text on Windows Movie Maker. Okay, so... Oh! That was close. I initially thought this dinosaur was going to make the train derail or collide itself. But anyways, these guys were... I'm pretty sure there's a creature in Star Wars called... What's it called again? A Pocobus. Minus the A, I think the Pocobus is one creature I can relate to. You know, it's kind of like a bird, but it's more of a dinosaur. Okay, this one's lacking the white details. Like that. See that? It's missing out. And I've also got another one here, which has the same features as the other one that I've shown you before. Which is now taking a dive, because of me. But this one here has got black tail details, like the one with the brown neck. And uh, this one here has actually got some additional pink details like that. Very interesting, and the tower is actually being a bit, well, well, let's just say, a bit dumb. Oh, sorry about that. Just got taken out by a train. But nevertheless, these guys look totally amazing. And there's also one with fully brown details, but the tower is completely different though. This section here has actually got an additional piece of tower detail like that, lacking the pink details. Very, very nice, very similar to the uh, the brown neck one, but with white details, but this one's fully brown, maybe, except for these black patterns there, as, that as I, um, I don't know what I'm saying here, yeah, I can actually see, that as I can actually see, and finally, last but by no means least, it's this one here, right on the back one there, and uh, that one there, the one with dark green patterns on it, and it looks quite nice, in fact it really does resemble an adult painted stork perfectly perfectly and nicely indeed I love the way this dinosaur has been created although the beak overall is a bit iffy I could just fix it like so as perfect as it sounds making sure oh dinosaurs came close to the um camera there that's very nice of you eh? very nice yes very very nice looking creatures very prehistoric and also very very weird looking as I could literally suggest that these guys have been mutated into some sort of very weird fictional species of extinct dinosaur. In fact, all dinosaurs are extinct, except for the modern day birds. As what we all know, dinosaurs and birds are related to each other. No matter how warm or cold blooded they are, we've got another flip up product to review. And it's this one here the young adult Spinosaurus, sub adults, and adolescents. Oh, did I say it wrong again? Adolescence Fishing Colour Variations 12 pack. And it costs about, the cone in the background moving away, 12 pounds. Look at that. That's what we have, guys. And at the back here, we've got six different colours of Spinosaurus, six Colcom fishies that we don't need to take a look at because I've already seen these before. And um, this product here is operated and delivered by Royal Mail. How is this possible if these sort of products have labels like that? I don't know why, but let's just go ahead and pack this along the way there, without sounding like a dunce. Okay, here we go. This could get, oh my goodness me, this could get mighty ugly, but anyways, we'll just push these, um, we might move these um, coal camps to the other side here, we've got these to see, but we don't need to look at them, because I've already seen them many, many times, as with all the other dinosaur themed products. Oh my goodness me, we've got different colour versions here to stand up with. We've got a brown one and a yellow one. We've got a brown one, yellow one, sorry. And we've got a red one, uh, sorry about that. Uh, a red and a yellow version, of course. Reminds me of the Spanish flag, that dinosaur there. That one right there. Okay, so it looks like that. I'm not sure if it's going to be quite easy or hard to stand all of these dinosaurs here, like so. Oh! didn't realise Spinosaurus could literally stand on all fours, I'm pretty sure Spinosaurus could use it, you know, its front and back limbs for swimming, of course. I've actually did realise that paleontologists knew that Spinosaurus was like the only dinosaur capable of swimming, which is very unusual, because not all dinosaurs can swim except for Spinosaurus. You know, a very weird research from five or six years ago. But anyways, here are the various different variations of Spinosaurus. Um, let's just go ahead and take a look at the colours, like so. And we've also got different coloured eyes here as well. So, the Spinosaurus is what we've got today is a Spanish coloured one. We've got a brown and yellow one here. We've got a an orange and a grey one. We've got a earth coloured one, which is 
the one with bright green and blue. And we've also got a, well, let's just say, a white and green one with orange eyes. And we've also got a female uh, blue and pink, pe oh my goodness me, blue and pink patterned. That's what I was about to say, eh? Blue and pink patterned dinosaur with a yellow eye. But I'm pretty sure. Let me just go ahead and have a bit of a close up here. This one here. It's actually got a green eye. But if I turn it to the other side here, it's got a yellow eye. And also in the packaging here, it's actually depicting that this one here is depicted as female. And oh my goodness me, it's got a freaking elongated neck. That would be agonizing. An elongated neck, like a freaking giraffe while eating a freaking coconut fish on the background. Very, very weird. And there's the other dinosaurs here. Okay, if I go a bit closer without being run over by a train, eh? I'm just going to make sure. Okay, it's going away. And this one here has got blue eyes. I think it's got blue eyes. Turn to the other side here. Yeah, I think it's more blue as I'm looking at visibly. This one's got yellow eyes. And, uh, yeah, this one's got, oh, is it brown or orange? I think it's more brown, I think. Yeah, this one's more brown eyes, okay. Very, very nice. There's another one here with blue eyes. I think this one's got blue eyes, I can't remember. And um, the packaging, it does tell me it's got blue eyes. And um, straight away, though. Whoa! That was close one. That was very, very close. And the train's derailed. Actually, I'm uh, just noticing that the, um, the grey and orange Spinosaurus actually has green eyes instead of blue eyes. Sorry about that one, guys. Didn't notice that one, eh? Let me try and show you to you guys again. Yes. Perfect, 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 perfect. Looks like we're getting a bit of dinosaur selfies here. And the orange-eyed one, which is white and green. Look at that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Gonna repack these Spinosaurus dinosaurs here along the way, guys. Because I think we're getting to a good start. And mind you, I had so many attempts making this video here because I got a funny feeling I must have been so, so rough at talking. And also, uh, the Tokyo Metro train must have been playing up on the rails. So I must have been playing up so, so much though for the fact that I must have been uh, not paying attention to the um, track on the bed and should have just pressed the joiners a bit downwards just to make sure that the train, that the train of course is secure while running in action. Gonna put that Spinosaurus toy away. Yep, it's gone. And I gotta tell you what, guys, eh? Um, oh my goodness, man. I'm gonna fix these track pieces like so. And I might move on to another set of origami dinosaurs product here. Okay, so I might talk about this one here. And remember, I did speak, I've actually spoken about in previous videos that I was going to include Tyrannosaurus Rex in many set of product videos. Okay, in fact, we've actually got a few. It's that product to unpack, which is going to be very, very nice to hear. And I might show you this product here. And if I get the camera to look at it properly today, and if I stand this one back, because I've already done everything and anything as I could, it's this one here. Enter Tyrannosaurus Rex Fire Pack. You initially thought Tyrannosaurus Rex wasn't going to be in a flip flap origami dinosaur toy view. Well, there you go. There's Tyrannosaurus Rex. Coloured in in a very different colour. Very, very nice. In fact, this is the first product to have Tyrannosaurus Rex with... Oh my goodness me, with us, though. There you go. Uh, the dinosaurs here, these Velociraptor Dynamicus stylized Raptor Dinosaurs. Um, they come in four different colour variations, of course. Which is very, very nice. We've got this one here. In fact, these guys, uh, I think I did a... I think I must have covered a flip-flap product about these guys before in a previous video. And they had to sell it... Yeah, I think these guys have the same colour combination and variation as in the previous video that I did, you know, which was a video that I've made just after the heat wave of, you know, two weeks ago. Very, very nice. Very different artwork of the Pikachu like Dynamicus Raptor Velociraptor thing. Let's just go ahead and unpack this. And we might show you what the Tyrannosaurus Rex has got. Okay, so let me take a look at the Raptors first. The Dynonychus Velociraptor things first. And I think they're going to have much clearer eyes, which is going to be nice. Same colorization as before, but I'm pretty sure the head might be totally different. I don't know. It looks pretty similar to what I've actually made in the previous video. Okay, that's that one there. 
This one here looks very similar to the other one that I did in the previous video, but it's bottom and next section here is a lot more terracotta than let's just say uh, oh just burnt here. <laughs> uh peach looking. I think this one's more terracotta slash light red. Um maybe peach, I dunno. Maybe dark, peach is red. Okay, it looks pretty nice. And then we've got this one here, which is more very similar to the other one I did. You know, this Pikachu like Velociraptor thing. Um but it's more of a different shade of yellow. As I can tell, even with the feet as well. Okay, it's all coloured in, in a very different colour. Okay, and I've also made another one here which looks very similar to the other one that I did in the previous video, uh, bundled with that um, Pikachu Raptor. Um, looks quite nice. But it's also got a very different eye style. If I show you the eyes, they look pretty anime styled looking, versus on how simplistic detailed the eyes were on that other Deinonychus 12 pack video that I did. And once again, these guys. Dinonychuses were portrayed and named as Velociraptors as the names were more dramatic than you would often say about using, you know, Dinonychus as, well, let's just say, a very original proper name. But anyways, let's take a look at the Tyrannosaurus Rex, eh? Let's see what T-Rex looks like. Oh my goodness me, it looks so, so beautiful, eh? Look at that, it's got a freaking 3D head. Now there's something you don't see in everyday life. A Tyrannosaurus Rex with a 3D head. Look at that, it looks so, so cool, eh? And it looks mighty awesome. It's got a very beautiful tail like so, of black on the underside, green on the top, red as well. I don't think that's blood, but I think it's more of a, uh, a piece of patterning like that. Well, I don't think it's blood, as I said earlier, like so. Lovely details like that. If I get the camera a bit closer, you can start to see the amazing details. Um, that I've actually placed onto this Tyrannosaurus oh my goodness me, this Tyrannosaurus Rex has like a, oh my goodness me, it's got two different shades of yellow one being more of a, um, a yellow that is close to that of a, um, a limey sort of yellow and there's another yellow one here which looks close to that of yellowish orange, I don't know but the very major part about Tyrannosaurus Rex is its freaking 3D head look at that guys, look at that look at that the head section there, on this section there, you can see the jaws, you can see the snouts. Very, very awesome. I think this is something that you don't see often on things like dinosaur products like that. Very cool indeed. In fact, I'm actually glad and happy to have our first Tyrannosaurus Rex, my first Tyrannosaurus Rex in the first range of things like dinosaur toys. Very amazing indeed. Very, very cool indeed. Now, let's go ahead. And just take a look at some flapping bird toys along the way. Okay, we, we're done with the dinosaurs now, but I don't think so because I just feel like I'm going to make more and more products. Probably let's just say 12, maybe 11, I don't know. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. And this is the one I've made just before midnight on Wednesday. It's called the Small Tropical Asian Mangrove Wetlands Habitat Birds Top Pack. Once again, costing 12 pounds. In fact, it's actually in the same price as these um, Spinosaurus I did just now. And what you can see are some tiger shrimps or tiger prawns. And there's some fishies, which I think... Uh, these are the sort of fishies that you normally keep them as pets. Or in aquariums, of course. I think these fishies there are found in Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. And I think these are called... I know they are tropical freshwater fish, I think. But I think they're called the Harlequin... Raspberry. If I show you the back of the packaging here, that's what they look like. And yep, the fish are indeed Harlequin Raspberries, which is very, very nice to hear. And we've got some spoon-billed sandpipers, which are a species of sandpiper which is critically endangered. And I think they're on winter plumage, which is kind of interesting, but not as interesting in what I obviously expect as in breeding plumage. But let's just take a look at what these guys are like. So here are the blue eared kingfishers. They actually come in three different beak colour variations here. One of them's got like a red and blackish beak colorization here. If I grab uh, a bit too closer here, you can start to see the patterns like so. Turn to the other side. Okay, looks quite nice. Very similar to the common kingfisher, but it's got these wing patterns like that of grey and blue. This one here. Okay, this one's got more of a, a very clear reddish beak. 
as I can tell but uh, by just looking at the camera like so hopefully it's a bit brighter though just to get a good contrast on what we have now yep same details I'm not gonna I'm actually gonna flap this so in fact all of these guys are named as blue eared kingfishers which is very, very nice but I think they've got a, you know, I'm pretty sure they've got a white spectrum right behind it this one here has got more of a, um, a greyish blackish beak there's no redding on it though no reds if I show you that one there there's some red I'm pretty sure you can see some reds spots of reds like that and this one here doesn't have any reds but it's got a head like that once again it's got the same details like that maybe I can make more and more of these blue eared kingfishers if I'm lucky enough very very nice looking birds apparently and normally with kingfishers they don't tend to form flocks they often you know they're very solitary but they're very monogamous as always as usual like many other species of birds like you know you know many small birds they tend to be fairly monogamous and uh, let's take a look at what we have guys we've got these um, shrimps or prawns you know we've got a white one an orange one and a yellow one it really reflects the colors of what tigers are like in the wild or in captivity they're very nice they've got very big kooky looking eyes once again using the word kooky just to describe on how you know googly they're like even though they're not really that googly because they haven't got like you know googly eyes or when you shake them they're, you know their freaking eyes move but they look very, very cool looking at all times okay We've got pincers on the front or feelers at the front. Maybe it's more like feelers, but it looks a bit there. And here are the spoon build sandpipers. Okay, I've made three of them and they look pretty nice. It's got a very, very weird looking spoon build at the front. Can you see it there? I can. I can see the beak, like so. Very unusual, isn't it? They And they are critically endangered because. You know, these guys are often hunted in Southeast Asia during the winter. You know, in the winter they're very critically endangered. I think in Burma or Myanmar, I think a lot of people shoot these guys, maybe for food, and that's very sad to hear, or maybe for, I don't know, you know, for feather trading, which is not very good, or something to make out of something from this bird, like, you know, making clothes out of feathers, which is very, very sad to hear, but that's the way humans are. And we've got another one here. In fact, all these guys are in the same design, like so. And I think, if I remember, I think they're probably about the same size as a Dunlin. Maybe the same size as a Blackbird or a Starling. Looks like they've got very weird, small-looking eyes on these birds. Very small for a water bird. And ex I think, apart from the kingfishers, um, sandpipers are quite small-looking birds, though. And they're one of the smaller water birds that often generate, you know, they often generate flocks. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Harlequin Raspberries without sounding too rough and ready. About this, 10 seconds and 2 o'clock. As I'm just looking at the, um, the date and time settings thing on the test bar. But anyways, let's take a look at the Harlequin Raspberries. They've got a red front, pretty smiley face, and they've got like a, um, a grey triangle. On each side, we've got red, orange, and white patterns on their fins. Very tropical looking fish, I think. They look very, very beautiful. Okay, it feels like we're getting a whole bunch of tropical species of animals these days. And it looks quite nice. Okay, and there's the other one. Very cool indeed. Oh yes, let's go ahead and move on to our next product along the way though. It looks like our trains are running nicely and sensibly today though let's go ahead and take a look at this one here which is also a water product and you might be thinking ain't swallows water birds? aren't they more of a land bird? well swallows are very very well known for skimming through the lakes so maybe they could be classified as water birds like terns you know terns eat fish swallows eat water insects and it's called the tropical asian pacific swallow versus diving beetles 12 pack 13 pounds quite unlucky price but look at this, these guys, in fact I actually did a video a long time ago, remember I did a video where I talked about Taylo, you know, the Barn Swallow Flock 12 Pack, you know, I've actually made two videos, that was very infamous for saying, you know, you remember that catchphrase of saying, oh that's just great, I released all that warm energy trap with nowhere to go, and I just said it for the first time, ever since quarantine began, well maybe not, but anyways, let's take a look at what we have, let me just take a look at the, um, the diving videos first, Okay, they've got yellow eyes, 
and they've also got yellow patterns on each side like so and on the bottom they've got grey details like so in fact it's fully grey with some yellow stripes like that very very nice and they've also made some with orange details as well and what's very interesting about these guys is that these guys might also be in the same spectrum as stink bugs due to their green colorizations here but I think they're more likely based on a, um, a South Asian South Asian species no, Southeast Asian species of um, I almost said stink bug, didn't I? But it's actually more of a um, a diving beetle. I think it's based on the diving beetle species in Southeast Asia or Indochina. That's another name for it. And there's another one here. Okay, I better show you all six of these. Let's take a look at the Pacific swallows. Next, they've got fork like tails, you know, pipe cleaners at the back. Oh, this is like back in the good old days. But these guys actually look more redesigned by the looks of their beaks yes look at that their beaks are more thinner than before very very absurdly weird guys as I'm speaking so differently because these guys look totally different and they're often designed I'm actually thinking this is actually much better than what I've actually did in previous videos back in last year because this is how swallows should actually be designed like so I think this is how a swallow should be designed you know, not just oversized, just make it smaller, like it is in reality of what swallows are. Just make them, you know, this freaking size, not just, you know, oversized, you know, big size birds. You know, that's much better in size. In fact, it looks so accurate to what these guys are actually are. And once again, these guys are very different to the barn swallows for the fact they are more blue, but they've also got dark grey wing patterns like so as well, very interesting indeed, and if I might show you the other one here yeah, they all look the same as the barn swallow but with grey wing patterns like that anyways, these guys are compatible with water, 100% compatible with water because they all have pencil detailings on themselves, which is very very nice and it's you know, very very nice to see a whole bunch of pictures and the packaging of a whole bunch of swallows preparing for a very huge murder trail you know, preparing for their delicacy of oh. almost said stink bugs, diving beetles okay, that's what we have guys and to be quite honest you know the moral of what we have now in this video but before I get into the moral in this video I'm just going to show you the back of the packaging here I'm going to skimmer for, I don't know you let me just read it again I'm going to skim it for you as your next delicacy. There you go. And what the, oh my goodness me, the artwork looks so hilarious. So we've got a we've got a very weird swallow with tails like that. Very symmetrical looking tails with a bit of iffy artwork detailing like slop. Oh my goodness me, it's a bit sloppy that one. He's a bit erasing now. Now this one here looks like he's flying randomly with his feet exposed. And we've got a couple of diving beetles there. Looks like one of them, in fact, two or three of these guys that look petrified because this guy's like, oh, I'm gonna freaking eat you. Okay, let's move on to our last tropical bird product and I'm, I'm actually gonna, hopefully, then, after this one here, the pink next green pigeon flock, five pack, six pounds, ninety-nine or seven pounds. And I'm gonna take a look at some dinosaur toys and merchandise, but I'm gonna keep it that way, just gonna film everything and anything as I'm just gonna review in this video here. Yep, they come in two different gender plumages, male and female and they're based on the pink necks pigeon uh, from, or should I say, pink necks green pigeon from Southeast Asia we were going to call it pink necks green pigeon or pink necks pigeon whatever I would say, but there you go and it looks like that Tokyo Metro train has actually gone a bit slow uh, maybe it's all due to the battery or maybe it's the, the way it's been, you know it works on um, track master track depending on how so it is. Maybe it's the energy in the battery. Or it could be like, you know, the amount of uh, elevation on the track there. Sorry about that one, mate. Didn't mean to do that, mate. Let's just turn this one off because I don't want the battery to leak on this one here. Okay, this one is a male pink necks green pigeon. And hence the name, it's only the males that have got pink necks. And uh, I might show you the other birds here. Okay, when flying, they've got green details like that and they've also got yellow stripes like that this also applies well with the females okay and on the back they've got like 
tiles which are blue, grey, brown and green with brown details at the bottom like so it's more of a different shade of green probably jade green or emerald green and this one's more of a um a very different sort of green I can't remember which shade it is but it looks quite nice and cool there's another male trying to you know you know mate with a female and fired because of me there's a yellow beak detail like that it's got pink as I said earlier the name really does apply well and there's a piece of red detailing like so which is very very nice it's also got a very huge colour combination of blue and pink or purple eyes now let's move on to the females now the females they've got grey tails grey tail ends and they've got brown on the top and yellow on the bottom which is a very weird opposite and the most notable opposition between the male and the female is that the females have fully green heads which is something that the males don't have and it's very weird to know that many male species of birds tend to have huge amounts of colour variations that tend to be more colourful than females which is well let's just say a very huge misconception because there are some female species of birds some bird species that the females can be colourful whereas the males can be dull at times very huge opposites when you think about it right interesting indeed okay that's that product done and now let's take some dinosaur products here remember I did these stayed two meters of Apatosaurus flags I did well here's another one I've made okay that's the one done then I don't oh my goodness me I don't want to show you that one again because I've already made like three copies ago and this is our fourth okay let's move on to this product here is that Archaeopteryx okay um, I'm pretty sure it is Archaeopteryx but it's, I'm pretty sure it might be a different dinosaur um, it's got wings in it actually by looking at it it's quite weird isn't it though and also speaking about it actually is it a dinosaur it looks more like a dragon by the looks of it though but it's got like bird wings but I'm pretty sure it's more like you know a small dinosaur with you know small wings maybe a large dinosaur with small wings it's also got a very weird feathered like tail okay looks very very nice maybe designed after either Microraptor or Archaeopteryx. Okay, it's got a chumpy jaw action here, like so. If I show it to you, it looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Very, very nice. And also the snout, it looks pretty perfect and very reptilian looking, okay? Very, very beautiful. It's got a white underside and white toes or feet on the bottom as well. Very, very cool. Yeah, it looks pretty Microraptor ish. I think it looks pretty, you know, Archaeopteryx y like sort of creature, I think pretty nice isn't it though? Okay it's time to fly away you well let's just say well recently mutated dragon dinosaur thing let's go speaking of dinosaurs here's another one there it's a baby yellow and orange parasaurolophus noticing that the parasaurolophus has got orange toes orange on the side and yellow Overside with legs which are also yellow as well, very very nice. It's got short legs, and yeah, it looks like a dog to me, though. But yeah, the legs look kind of doggish looking. But this dinosaur here it looks so cute, reminds me of Pikachu's dinosaur, or maybe it's a Pikachu version of dinosaur, minus the cheeks. Very very nice looking um, design of Parasaurolophus. I'm pretty sure it's a baby one. Okay, it looks quite nice. The face looks pretty. Uh, cheesy looking but also cute at the same time very chibi styled I think and once again I've got the weird duck bill because Parasaurolophus is a duck bill dinosaur haven't made too many um, herbivorous dinosaurs in origami form a lot though maybe except for the sauropods okay well it looks pretty cool okay very very nice and last but by no means least to finish off the whole flip up toy view okay we've got some party sauce headbands maybe you can wear this to a whole birthday thing you know okay it's getting pretty amazing I've actually made two of these which is pretty amazing at all times maybe I could make some more which would be very very nice of course Party source that's what I like to hear and um, actually it's got some pictures of illustrations of looks like a oh my goodness me it looks like the logo of Jurassic Park that Tyrannosaurus Rex oh my goodness me you've got a, um, a Triceratops Head. You've got a um, what's that one there? Is that Brachiosaurus? 
I'm not quite sure. It could be a Palosaurus. I think it's most likely Brachiosaurus because of its freaking neck. And uh, I think this was this was actually um uh, is that the first one? I think this is the second one I've actually made because I think this is how I can tell by the looks of it, of course. And here's the first one I've made. Okay, looks pretty original looking because I've actually made this during Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember. Actually, these dinosaurs, these brachiosaurus like critters, aren't they looking like they've got fish heads? That's very weird. But anyways, that's you know fun for the kids, as I could say, in a very different way. I think that's just about it, guys. Well, that's probably about it in this very weird dinosaurs flipped up toy view slash flipped up origami flapping birds and also merchandise. That's just about it for today. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a like. Subscribe for more flip flap videos on YouTube. And mind you, it has been so so different for the fact we've got different trains and different products, which is very very nice to hear. But anyways, as always, thank you very much for watching. And bye for now. I'm waiting for another summer's day to come. Bye.